Welcome. Welcome to The Bunker. Uh, for those of you guys who have been following the journey so far, uh, we've had the keys to this place for about 10 months now. Now, obviously, you don't need me to tell you that the world has been somewhat put on pause halfway through the year, and that ultimately put us on pause. Uh, but the team made it back in after lockdown, and here we are finally settled in to the Production Bunker studio. And that's exactly what this space is. It's not so much an HQ or anything like that. It has been specifically designed for creating content. Uh, heavily geared up towards filming cars, uh, but content none the less. And so what does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, we uh, actually had the privilege of being able to film in here before we began the build of it. Uh, so if you watched the uh, early Koenigsegg Regera video when this place looked more like a sort of office with a pretty naff carpet in, uh, while that was great for content, it was actually a test run. And what we found was lighting, acoustics and space wasn't necessarily what we thought it was. When you stand in here with no car, it actually feels like quite a big room, but it's not until you get a car inside that you realize that actually there's not that much space. The original lighting was terrible and so was the acoustics. So what have we done to address that? Well, let's just speak about this first. My favorite feature is of course the turntable. So let me just demo this to you. We actually have this uh, wall mounted turntable operating device here. So I press this right now. Ah, oh, here she spins. This is it. So, we haven't just installed this because it's cool or fancy. Uh, the reason we've installed this is because when you come to wanting to shoot a different angle of a car in this room, uh, you can't actually maneuver the car in here because the space is too small. And so what that involved was driving the car physically outside, turning it around and bringing it back in. And you might think, oh, that sounds like such a chore. It wasn't that, it was typically you're filming inside with a beautiful posh clean car, it's typically raining and dirty. And so what, not only do you end up dragging dirt back in on your lovely clean wooden floor, but also the continuity of your shot changes and you have to spend a, a good hour wiping down your otherwise clean car. So we thought, you know what? We will stick in a turntable to save us time and also to uh, help with the continuity of our shots. Now this turntable uh, is just over five meters in diameter. Now, to spot a context, the sort of car that that can accommodate, um, we've actually tested this actually, is an Aston Martin DBX, a pretty substantially large car. Doing some research, uh, a McLaren Speedtail might marginally overhang, but we have accounted for that. And all of the artwork and other infrastructure to assist with filming is still away from the overall radius of the table. Also, if you join me down here, so we also have the circumference of the turntable is lit. Now, what's quite nice is all of the ambient lighting is full color spectrum changeable. So my idea is, and we haven't actually tested this yet, we are actually yet to film a car in here. So you are seeing this. Once again, spot of context, we completed this yesterday. <laughs> so that's how fresh it is. But the idea for me is that when we have a red car in here, we might light the ambient lighting red. Um, or if we would like to make the uh, car pop off the background a bit more, completely change it to a contrasting shade. So it's nice to be able to play with the ambient lighting. Speaking of lighting, join me back up again. Behold, this massive halo-like soft light box. Uh, now, I'll be completely honest, we ripped this directly out of the McLaren Technology Center, the MTC HQ. Uh, if you've uh, been fortunate enough to step foot in there, um, they have a sort of uh, setup where they've got a showroom with inside the main HQ. And in there, they have a very fancy car on a turntable and above it is a light box. I can't tell you how long it took us to find this size and the appropriate light box, but what it does is it has a diffusion factor about it. So it's not a harsh light, it drapes soft light over a car. So when we actually film these cars, they're not overexposed. It doesn't create any spikes in exposure, no harsh light. It's just soft and draped over the body of the car. Now, while we're on the subject of ceilings, this takes us neatly onto the topic of acoustics. Uh, going back to when we did our original test in here, it was an echo chamber. The audio was all over the place. Even with a decent lav mic on, you would still pick up on the echo. So we actually did quite a, a lot of research into making an acoustically optimized room. It turns out it's really expensive. So instead of forking out and paying lots of money for acoustically engineered panels, we have built and created our own slats. 
up here. Now, we also painted this ceiling black in order to sort of isolate the lit area from the filming area. She'll explain how that setup works shortly. But these slats, there's 125 of them. They are wooden panels with acoustic foam stuck onto either side. Now, I don't really have a before and after, but in here, generally, it's all hard surfaces. Yet, I'm hoping what you can pick up on right now, there's no echo, there's no bounce. It's just a really nice, crisp, acoustic environment. Perfect for doing our walk and talks around these cars. Flooring, uh, we went and uh, found some beautiful hardwood and what we were thinking about originally, because the turntable actually comes with a really nice sort of metal checkerboard plate finish and we were thinking, do we wanna have that as an exposed area? But instead, the joiners ended up matching the grain of the wood floor and the turn table. The only problem is if you've got OCD, you can spend, <laughs> you can spend minutes trying to get the grain lined up. Now, even though this is a fairly hard floor, it's just a better acoustic setup than if you were to have a, you know, polished concrete floor that you might associate with a garage. Now, on the outset, you would be forgiven for thinking this is a sort of man cave garage setup. And in a way, in an element, it, it is, but its primary focus is for content, for walk and talks and exposés on uh, very fancy and interesting cars. Now then, if you follow the cars and art world, no doubt you'll have heard of Paul Oz. Now, I've always wanted my own man cave or space to hang some stuff, which has really appeal to me. Uh, this one I've actually had my eye on for a while, mostly because of the colors. It just pops so hard. I mean, this paint that Paul's uses is basically neon. The story of it, it was painted to celebrate Lando Norris's first F1 podium, but I just love the way it pops. Now, in order to make it easier to swap and mount artwork, instead of just having it bolted on in a fixed position directly to the wall, behind this you might notice this metal cage. Now, what this allows for is to easily mount and swap different sizes of art. And finally, for me to be able to have a Paul Oz, actually two, in here, fantastic stuff. Excuse me, I better put that down now. Right, just a few more details before we pop next door. On the F1 theme, we've also got some phenomenal stuff, which I shall show you next door from Racing Gold. Now this spotlight, for example, is made from a, a F1 fuel filling pump. So that was the item that used to go over guys' shoulders and they would stick it in the F1 car. It's all been chromed up and brought back to life and installed with a uh, spotlight. It's a really cool thing. Anyway, details, uh, we do have fire escapes and fire doors here, uh, but we managed to clad them in these sliding doors here, just so that when we're actually filming, we don't have any light or a bright white door sort of exposed in uh, uh, shot. So it's just basic small things that we've added on these. I mean, these are big, heavy doors. But the engineering involved in it has been great. The team which has built this, uh, they really got on board with the vision and idea of it being a film studio. Uh, just lots of space here to store things. I mean, th th these are examples of these cupboards not being finished yet. As I mentioned, we opened it yesterday, but these are supposed to be soft close and soft open, so you press it and it will pop open. But soon all of this will be filled with various camera gears and filters and things like that. Uh, back on to the topic of Paul Oz. Um, this has got the most incredible story. Paul managed to get a stunt horse into a studio uh, that reared up and stood up long enough on, note, one leg for a photograph in 3D. So imagine that sort of matrix style capture studio with cameras in full 360 around a horse in a studio. It reared up, they captured it in 3D and over the course of the following nine months, uh, Paul managed to recreate the iconic Ferrari prancing horse uh, in solid bronze. Uh, we are super honored to have this in here because it's the first in the world uh, and it's the first one before Paul makes a full scale, I think it'll stand over six foot tall version of that, which will weigh about uh, 300 kilograms. So uh, good luck bringing that here, Paul, but honored to have it here. And I just think it really ties in the theme of cars and F1, etc. Anyway, uh, onwards this way. Uh, these are actually screens. So 
The idea here as well, it won't just be for filming. We might have launches here. Various partners can bring down guests and VIPs. So on here, we could have their logo our logo. Also from a filming point of view, if there's a very stat heavy car, we can actually project some points not to forget to say on camera out of shot. So that say I'm filming a Koenigsegg, which is like learning your fighter pilot's license of data. It'll be nice to have some points on here to just glance at so that we don't miss them out. So that'll be cool. And it's split into uh, three. However, the screens that we ordered, these are actually slightly too large. So if you follow me here and point the camera around here, there is actually a recess in here where the screens were supposed to fit in flush. They will be getting swapped out soon and they will fit flush with this concrete post right here. Speaking of concrete post, this is here to create a barrier between studio and kitchen and toilet area. You don't necessarily want a kitchen in the background when you're filming cars. Now, as I mentioned, this place was finished yesterday. So sadly, and as my body is detecting right now, we have no coffee machine and I'm lacking on the juice. But soon we will have that here, which will be great. We also have a little HDMI lead in here as well, plumbed in so that we can plug in a laptop and display anything that we want on the screens on the other side of there. And then once again, all of the ambient lighting is linked in. Kitchen, um, not a big priority for us here. We actually reduced the size of the original kitchen, which was here. This isn't exactly an MTV Cribs style kitchen. It's just a generic kitchen, but it's a lot nicer than the one that was in here. Uh, bathroom. Now, the theme of sliding doors, uh, as we saw on the fire door earlier, just interacting with this is so gratifying. Look at that, it's great. Also beautiful, quality, heavy, Wooden doors, not normally super proud about the uh, WC, but it's a nice place to be. However, it ties in nicely with the pump and dump earlier on. <laughs> so this is the unfinished raw fuel pump, which uh, made up the spotlight, which I showed you earlier on. Uh, remarkable, because everything else in Formula One is so lightweight, except for the thing <laughs> which the poor Tex would have had to, this thing it weighs so, so much weight, but Imagine F1 car arriving and you've got to get a fuel loaded massive pipe dumped in to an F1 car and then driven off in a record breaking time. Pretty crazy stuff. So we've got that there on show for your, for your guests to kill some time while they're in here. And also we have this uh, Rolls Royce um, jet engine blade sculpture. Kind of random, but looks nice. I don't know why we actually have it, but uh, it just looks good. Also, I quite like on the theme of sliding doors, we have these sort of rotating uh, lights here. Yeah, it's cool. Anyway, so there's me. First time I've been proud of a water closet, sir. Sliding doors and then here, welcome to podcast studio, lounge, and uh, all round chill area. Now you might detect next level change in audio optimization in here. That's because, follow me, Soft walls. All of this is softly padded, deep foamed walls. Uh, there will be podcasts recorded in here. So it's all been very much attention on the uh, optimization of the acoustics, but also of the backdrop too. So these are the sort of memorabilia shelves, as it were, which we've set up. We actually don't have that much to put on show right now, but eventually they'll be filmed with helmets. And if I pull my finger out in racing, maybe some trophies. I do have a, a third place there that I'm slightly proud of, but anyway. So yes, uh, on the theme of cool things on shelves, this is an amazing thing. So not only is the wooden sculpture itself cool, hand carved, hardwood, beautiful silhouette of an F1 car, but it just so casually happens to be mounted on the differential of Sebastian Vettel's Red Bull F1 car. And oh, look at that. It, rotates and the diff, look, all the cogs, it all still works. Honestly, it's, it's engineering porn. It just feels good. It's a stunning, stunning thing. So I, I love that every sort of artifact in here has its own story. Uh, we have a F1 exhaust system over there for our spotlights. This is incredible. The guys at Racing Gold created this from a single piece of Formula One exhaust and it was constructed cold. They didn't actually warm it up in order to create 
that shape. Uh, it is a remarkable thing. And then we have, I think for me, this is probably my favorite piece that Paul's done. I don't know about you, Paul, you've done some incredible things, but uh, the bronze Senna. So this was created, uh, Paul Oz went and got Senna's actual helmet and race suit and boots, wore them, went into the studio, same as the horse, and he posed in the position Senna would have sat going up Eau Rouge at Spa. So that, as the right foot would suggest, is flat through Eau Rouge. Incredible thing. Uh, he's also done a life-size version of that. It's just a stunning, stunning thing. And conveniently, Senna is looking after the rotator switch for the turntable outside. Okay, so one other distinctive feature. I'm not sure if many of you followed the construction journey of this studio, but this very much was not here. Um, significant because the building we're in was actually an old ammunition store. We are on an ex-RAF base, and so this wall was literally reinforced concrete and brick. It was four courses thick, uh, and of all of the jobs and time allocated to this room, just knocking through this wall so you could see podcast room from studio uh, took almost a week. One of the big parts of it was that because the building is a listed building, we were requested to preserve the bricks. So all of the bricks which were taken out of here, we sort of nicely stashed away just in case we need to brick it up again. Honestly, crazy stuff. The idea being we wanted these glass doors so that we can close them but still see whatever interesting car is on the turntable while we're filming podcasts. So pretty handy stuff. Oh yeah, and there's also one more thing. <laughs> As always, thanks so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.